In this video, we're looking at systems of equations and solving them using a substitution method. So systems of equations, we're looking at equations like this. Uh, for the most part, both equations have two variables and we need to solve for both variables. So the tricky thing with a system of equations that has two variables, for example, let's just say we have x plus y equals five. If you only have one equation and there's two or more variables, you can't solve it. There are technically infinite possibilities. For example, x could be one, y could be four, that equals five. X could be two, Y could be three, that equals five. X could be 2.1, Y could be 2.9, that would equal five, and so on. So if there's only one equation and two variables, we can't solve it. So that's where the multiple equations come in. So for each of these types of problems, each of these, um, each of these problems of this type, you're gonna have at least two equations. So it turns out when we have these multiple pieces of information, it's going to allow us to solve this system of equations or these. So let's go through the steps and then we'll talk about it a little more. So one of the equations, you need to have a variable by itself. It doesn't matter what variable it is. So all these equations have X and Y's, but these can be any variables. But we just need one of them to be uh, by itself. And in this first equation, we kind of get lucky because we already have an x by itself. Sometimes you need to move things around. So we have x by itself on one side of the equal sign equals something. Then we take the other equation. This 2x plus 2y equals 10. And we're going to substitute out. So this first equation is telling us that x is equal to is the same thing as y minus 1. So if we wanted to, anytime we saw an X, we could replace it with Y minus one and they have the same value. They're equal to each other. So we're gonna come back here and we're gonna take out the X and put in a Y minus one. Take out that X, put in the Y minus one in parentheses and get in the habit when you take something out, when you're plugging in, put parentheses and then everything else drops down. So it may take a couple of these examples for you for it to click exactly what we're doing, but just took out the X. We can even color code that X. We just took this equation, plugged in for X. Now from here, we're just uh, solving because now something important happened, which is that we only have one variable. We only have a Y. Sure, we have two Y's. We have Y here and Y here, but they're both the same letter. So it's, it's gonna be possible to solve. So how do we solve this? Well, let's just go through our steps. Distributing, we have something we can distribute. 2y minus 2 plus 2y equals 10. We have some like terms we can combine. 4y minus 2 equals 10. Deal with this addition. 4y equals 12. Divide by 4. So to be able to solve a system of equations, you're going to need to have some basic um, equation solving skills. So we got y equals three, but we're looking for two values. We have an x and a y in our original equations. So we found our y, we need to find, find our x. How do we find our x? Well, we just take either of the equations and plug in this y value. So let's just take, let's take, uh, it's getting a little crowded over here. Let's take this first equation. Let's just go ahead and rewrite it x equals y minus 1. Well, now we know what y is. y is 3. So let's find out what x is. So take out the y. We're going to plug in that 3. In this case, the parentheses don't need to be there. They just drop away. That's 3 minus 1, which is 2. So we already found our, we already found our x value. And a lot of times, you'll see this written as an, a, a, an ordered pair. So x comma y, 2 comma 3. So you can either list them separately or write them together as an ordered pair. So now number two, two more equations. We need to solve for x and y. So remember our first step is we need to find an equation or make an equation where one of the variables is by itself. So we don't care whether it's the top one, the bottom one, 
whether it's the X or the Y, as long as one variable is by itself. In this case, it already uh, we already have something. We have the Y by itself down here. We don't care that it's a Y up here as an X, but we're going to go through the exact same process. So this is the one with the variable by itself. So we start with the other equation. So let's just copy it back down. And then this time we're told what y is. It says y is equal to, y is the same thing as 2x plus 7. So anytime we see a y, if we want to, we can replace it with a 2x plus 7. So let's take this y and replace it with the 2x plus 7. So everything else drops down the same. Take out that y, put in the 2x plus 7. And the purpose of this, again, is because now look at our equation. We only have x's. We can't solve when there's two different variables, but now it's both an X. They're both X's. So that's kind of the substituting step. And now we're just ready to solve for X, just using algebra loops. 3X plus 4X plus 14 equals 7. We have some like terms, 3X and positive 4X, that'd be 7X. Subtract 14, divide by 7, x equals negative 1. So we found part of our answer. We got the x. Now we need to solve for y. So again, you can take either equation. You can do this top one or the bottom one. The bottom one, the one with the variable by itself, is probably going to be easier. Either one will get you the same answer. Let's go ahead and take this one the y equals 2x plus 7. How are we going to solve this? How are, what are we going to do here? Well, we already know x, so we're looking for y. We found out that x was negative 1, so we're going to swap out this x with a negative 1. Remember, when there's something next to parentheses like this, it means multiplication, so that's 2 times negative 1. Negative 2 plus 7 is 5. Oops. So we have our X and our Y. You can write them as an ordered pair if you'd like, or if that was multiple choice, that might be one of the answer selections written like this. Negative one, five. X first, then Y. Number three, we come into a little bit of a problem. So we take the same approach. We say, okay, we need one of our equations to have a variable by itself. Problem here. None of the variables are by themselves. So you need to figure out a way to isolate one of the variables. So which one's it going to be easier to get a variable by itself? Well, what does it mean for a variable by it to be by itself? We just want it to be that variable equals. There's no number in front. There's nothing being added or subtracted and so on. So what do we want to deal with this top equation or the bottom equation? Probably the top, because these bottom ones, they have the coefficients, the numbers in front, that we'd have to get rid of. So let's take this top one. You can get x by itself or y by itself. It's the same difficulty level. You just need to subtract one. So let's take x plus y equals 4. And let's get x by itself. So we would just do minus y, minus y. And we get x equals 4 minus y. So just like up here, we started with x equals something. Now we've rearranged our equation so that we have our variable by itself. We have x equals something. So now let's just proceed as usual. So you can think of it as this equation's gone, and now we have the x equals 4 minus 1. They're the same equation either way, so however you want to think about it. So what we learned is that x is the same thing as equal to 4 minus y. So let's come over here. Let's replace the x with a 4 minus y. 2x minus 3y equals 8. Swap in, so we're going to get 2, 4 minus y, minus 3y equals 8. Do some distributing. We get 8 minus 2y minus 3y equals 8. We have some like terms we can combine. Make sure you capture this sign in front. You don't want to ignore that. Uh, so that's a negative 2y minus 3y, which, uh, which would be negative 5y. Subtract 
subtract eight, negative five y equals zero. So here's a case that could come up when we're doing algebra sometimes, which is we have it equal to zero. And what are we gonna be doing here? Let's just make some space. We're gonna be dividing. So we're gonna divide both sides by negative five, take the negative with it. And then what is zero divided by negative five? Well, zero divided by anything is still zero. So if you ever have that, you're dividing zero by something, it may seem weird because it's always gonna be zero, but that's fine. There aren't any problems. So we found out what our y equals, zero. That's fine, no problem. And now let's figure out what x equals. So I'd encourage you to pause the video and see if you can solve for x. So from here, we take any of our equations. You can use this one, you can use this one, or you can actually use the original one that we started with, it doesn't matter. Let's just use this one, kind of like we've been doing. X equals four minus Y. We just found out that Y is equal to zero. So we're substituting in zero. We're gonna get X equals four. So we got y equals zero, x equals four. We can write this as an ordered pair, four comma zero. Remember x first, then your y, and there's our answer.